Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, um, today's sketchbook doodles video is gonna be a little bit of a mess in terms of, I guess, I don't know. I guess I, when I filmed the first session, it was a lot shorter than expected. So I decided to wait a few days and film a second session. So the energy going from the first session and the second session are going to be quite different. I did take some of you guys' advice and picked up the Ohuhu water-based markers, which I bought the pastel set as that is what I was actually looking for. And so far, I'm actually really pleased with these. I think these would fit really well with the Crayola Super Tips just because how vibrant and bright the Crayola Super Tips are. Um, I'll make sure to leave all the marker details and stuff in the description if you're looking for them. Um, there was one little gripe I had about these markers compared to... I guess like Crayola Super Tips really doesn't have this problem because it literally has like no labeling. Um, but I think some of the markers that I got, maybe the bodies of them or something are swapped. So the color that I'm using right now, actually let me see if I have the color chart with me. Okay, okay. So um, while I'm looking at the color chart, I think light peach and deep pink might have gotten swapped because light peach actually looks purple and deep pink looks more like yellowy peach which doesn't make sense um which i got a little bit of a confusion when i was picking up the markers the markers themselves don't really match the barrels as closely i think the blues match well and the grays match well some of the pinks and the kind of like peachy colors don't really match which kind of confused me so this spread of masaki um was supposed to be a little bit more pink and this kind of dusty pale green color and I just decided to pick colors based on the barrels themselves rather than picking it by the names or the numbers or looking at the swatch seat um but yeah but now we ended up with a kind of like a light pale peach color or like a yellowy peach color along with the pale green. I actually really like this so I'm not too bothered by it but I think it's going to trip me up in the future. So as long as I swatch colors beforehand, which I usually do, it shouldn't be really of a problem. And it's kind of just like a minor thing. Um, but yeah, so I decided to do two spreads. So one of Masaki and one of my no-name OC and I wanted to focus mostly on the pastel colors. Now I did use the magic fly markers as you would have saw earlier that I labeled that I was going to use them for the line work because I just like using the fine liner or like the fine tip part of this marker. I just find it really nice. So for the Ohuhu markers, they do have dual tip as well. I think the smaller tip on this marker like on the ohuhu is similar to like a bullet nib rather than a fine liner so that's why i'm using the magic fly as well as the magic fly does have a little bit of like deeper and vibrant colors compared to the pastel set because i bought the pastel set so i can match it with some other colors so that they're not overbearing and so far like i said i'm really pleased i think the pastel colors really live up to their name um, and a lot of them are super pastel. There is maybe like one color, like the mint green. I I don't know. I think to me, it could pass almost as a mid-tone. But for a lot of the cases, I don't really, I don't think I really have a green this color that is in this kind of value range. So I think it's good. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to do a masaki to kind of like test out these colors first of all. I think it's really easy for me to split up cool and warm colors for his like overall look because his apron and his hair match and then his usually the rest of his clothes plus his eyes kind of match so it's easy for me to kind of pick and choose. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty with the second spread that you guys will see. I also kind of fudged up Masaki's sketch on the very right with the plot the, with the pots. Um, they look a little bit weird and the way how I have his arm angled, it makes him look super like squished and really thin, um, which was not what I was going for, but that's okay. So the second spread, I'm gonna be doing three spreads for this video. Um, but these two first spreads were done on the same day and I'm focusing mostly on using the 
pastel markers so we can just play around the color combinations here maybe like in the future i'll do more of a deep dive into these markers if you guys would like to but i think water-based markers are a little bit more straightforward so i'm not sure if that's something you guys would be interested in but yeah uh i decided to do to my no name oc so we could play around with some more blue tones and i wasn't really up to drawing sato because she has a lot more kind of like a pink pastel hair color which would be a little bit more prominent on the spread so i wanted the spread to be a little bit more blue focused and i guess he's the closest one other than koji but koji's is a lot darker in my opinion in terms of his color scheme and it's really only his hoodie or his vest that's like a blue color so yeah no name oc gets the spread um so i decided to go with the typical kind of light blue and then some kind of pastel pink color i believe i use powder pink and probably just pastel blue together and they're really just colors that i really like together because i usually use pink and blue quite often when i'm doing like carrot spreads or like 17 spreads and i decided to use almost like a bluish purple for the outlines just because it's a little bit softer than black and it's not as I don't know if i if i used a purple it'd be too warm but if i use too much of a dark blue i think it reads too much like black so i wanted something a little bit more vibrant because these pastel colors are so light i could get away with using you know colors that aren't too too dark mm, but yeah i just kind of played around with his outfit a little bit kept it quite simple for posing and stuff around him. I just wanted to get a little bit more comfortable drawing him since that's usually a problem for me as well. Uh, so yeah, not too much to talk about for this spread. Surprisingly, when I was cutting down the footage, or not cutting down the footage, I guess speeding up the footage, usually these sessions go for a lot longer. Not sure why these were so significantly shorter or speedier than the rest. Maybe it's because I only did two spreads or because I filled these in a, such a weird way. Very much like, I don't know. I didn't, I don't think I played with the space as well as some other spreads I've done in the past. So let's talk about my sketchbook right now. So, oh, let me give you context actually first for the sketches. So for these last few ones, I just made it look like he just lost his glasses and Sato is wearing them. And then he's embarrassed that, um, yeah, he probably thinks Otto looks good on them, but he honestly can't see. He's kind of blind without his glasses, so there we go. Um, but sketchbook. I only have a few pages left, which makes me really good. Like, wow, I can't speak. And I'm congested. This is great. Um, I only have a few pages left, which I'm really excited because I kind of want to move on from this sketchbook. Now, I haven't decided if I am going to be using one of my notebooks again as a sketchbook or if I'm going to be working in the Tricky Wagon one, which I know I can play around with more wet mediums in it. Um, yeah, I'm still in the predicament of that. I, I'm not too sure. I don't know if I want to go into the route of making a sketchbook look really aesthetic. So I might go with the Tricky Wagon sketchbook or if I want to go something a little bit more how I treat the sketchbook. I think once I have the sketchbook tore out, which won't be for a little bit because I still have like maybe 20 pages, maybe like 10 pages front and back, kind of like that amount left. So it might be a few weeks until I can uh, get to that. Okay, um, the spread. So I decided to quickly sketch out Uki and Alban. So I was gonna do one of each for every member of Noctix. By the way, Noctix is a um, VTuber group under Niji Sanji E N. So yeah, they're just VTubers that I really, really enjoy. I enjoy pretty much all of the E N um, members, and I enjoy a lot of the like JP and a few from the KR, but. Yeah, I decided to do a few because I wanted to play a little bit with the color scheme and I decided to pair them up with the Crayola Super Tips and the Ohuhu markers. And obviously I'm going to be using the Magic Fly again for the kind of the line work or line art, whatever you think it is. Uh, I decided to just sketch out Uki and Alban first uh, to see how I was feeling because I actually had all of them laid out for like... A, in terms of references, I had them all laid out on one canvas, just ready to go, just in case I needed to zoom in and out to check their outfits and stuff. But 
I didn't know how I wanted to do the spreads and I always feel awkward limiting my spreads to like one page rather than a full page spread. You can see that I was kind of struggling with posing and some things look a little bit scrunched um, because I am being careful of not overlapping the things, which I kind of wish I just went freely sketching the entire thing. Oh, that's another thing. The colors I chose for Alban, I think look nice together. But for his character design, it doesn't really read as him. It almost reads as a mixture of Alban and Toma from Genjin Impact, um, which I kind of had a problem with. But I think it's also because I chose a little bit of a pale green for some of his outfit, which reads more gray um, rather than black, if that makes sense. Uh, you'll see once I get to the actual lining portion because his outfit has so much black. And this is another reason why I didn't want to draw the other members quite yet for these kinds of spreads. And I don't know if I will. Maybe I'll just continue to either draw them with graphite or to doodle them digitally or draw them digitally. Because I don't know if you guys can tell, I've been having a lot of fun drawing VTubers. And I think it's just because I need a break from Genshin designs. And just like the idea of Genshin drawing and stuff is giving... I don't know, it's taking a toll on me um, in terms of wanting to draw other things. Because, I don't know, there's like certain Genshin characters that I gravitate towards and then some that I don't. And then the, you can see that there's a lot that I haven't drawn quite yet. And I feel like it's because I feel intimidated, um, which is kind of nice for me that usually when I stream, I can stream whatever I want to draw rather than being pressured um, by making good art for a video if that makes sense because I've been having a lot of fun just taking my time drawing VTuber things and then being able to stream it for whenever and then whenever I have time I'll finish them and the time lapses have been quite um easy I guess because it's less editing but you guys also get to see the full process I know a lot of you guys don't really like um the videos where I'm not talking about the process and stuff and I know the Procreate video sometimes it's hard to see what I'm working on because sometimes I really go in to render things and I saw through a few of you guys exposing me about the chain I was working on for boxes that um, I said that we'll keep it a secret between us and y'all exposing me uh, but yeah I was having fun doing fan art for like VTuber stuff. I, there's a lot that I want to do in terms of fan art and stuff just because I really do like their color schemes and the, their designs and because I think it's easier for me to do fan art of the EN because there's more moments and things that I can understand about their personality rather than the ones from JP and KR. Mm, but that being said, there's still ones that I want to draw from them. And I, there's like people from Hollow Live or like Prison Project or Hollow Stars that I also want to draw. Because I also want to draw Oga from, I think he's from Hollow Stars. And then there's several people from Hollow Live I want to draw. And then a lot of from Niji Sanji JP that I want to draw, like Kanae, Kuzuha, Kaidaharu. There's like a quite there's quite a few that I would like to draw. So yeah. Thank you guys very much for being understanding about me kind of like flip-flopping between my interests. Cause like I said, um whatever I draw is usually stuff that I'm interested in, hence why I don't draw like, you know, mainstream fan art. Well I guess Gen like Genshin's kind of mainstream at this point, but I genuinely enjoy it, so yeah. It's just whatever I enjoy, I just wanna draw. So yeah, I'm just gonna be kind of flip-flopping. I think I got derailed on what I was talking about, so apologies if I was gonna be talking about something important and I just derailed. Um, so yeah, I drew Uki kind of more idol-esque in terms of posing and I gave him like one of those in-ear mics and stuff for his, just because I really like his singing. He's, his tone of voice and stuff is really pretty, so I really like listening to his voice. Um, but yeah, in terms of design that I think I'm just getting a lot more comfortable with in terms of drawing is obviously Alban because I spent the most time just drawing him in general. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the piece. If you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, you probably already saw it. The one that he's holding the rose with all the bunch of leaves behind him. Yeah, I spent 16 hours doing that and I shouldn't have, but that's what happens when I become like super distracted while working on a piece because I will re-render and render the same thing over and over again, which kind of just racks up time. Um, I'll think about whether or not I'm going to post the actual time-lapse portion for that on YouTube a little bit later. 
Um, but let's see. Yeah. Uh, you can see that the color for his design doesn't really fit for his hair. I should have picked something a little bit more maybe pink to match the brown hair color rather than the yellow. I just thought yellow would have looked nice and it does, but just it doesn't fit his character colors that well. So it doesn't really read as Alban that much. We'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens because um, in the future, I'll definitely do more fan art and hopefully it'll be a little bit more accurate. But hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. Maybe I'll do a more in-depth video with the Ohuhu markers. We'll see. Um, and the Tombow markers, I'm looking to get off of Jet Pens when I make an order so I can buy them all together with other art supplies. I think that's better for me. So we'll see when that happens. Um, but I'll talk to you guys next time with another video. Bye!